following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, we go into the breach, dear friends. And of course, what a change a day makes. And as uh, I always grew up in the Midwest, they said, if you didn't like the weather, just wait 10 minutes. Well, all we had to do is wait a day and a wait for some spineless weasels to collapse like a $5 suitcase uh, in a matter of seconds, well, maybe minutes. Um, we had Mario, uh, Super Mario Draghi, uh, but that's about it. It was, uh, uh, he said, all the rain. Well, this is Florida. I'm talking about the Midwest. You just have to wait 10 minutes and the weather changes. If it's hot one day, it's cold the next. If it's rainy, then it's sunshiny. It's always changing. And the weather a lot more standard down here in Florida. Anyway, uh, Mario Draghi uh, shooting his mouth off yet again. And, of course, uh, oh, probably should have had it ready. Uh, but uh, here's my theme song for him and Janet Yellen lately. <laughs> He told a big, fat lie yesterday, which is that uh, he kind of said that he could get by without uh, basically uh, doing what he told everybody. You're telling me a big, fat lie. That's what he told me yesterday. And, of course, it had all changed by today uh, when he came out this morning and started blabbing yet again and uh, basically said, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Market, uh, you're uh, you're a good guy, and I'm wrong. Finally, uh, amazingly enough, if you watched uh, early, I was up about five thirty or six this morning. If you were watching uh, early uh, news, you saw he'd sent a bunch of morons out to say that the market got it all wrong. That uh, he really didn't say anything that he actually said. So uh, I played back what he said yesterday. And you know what? He played back exactly, he said exactly what he said. Uh, I don't know what planet these people live on, but they should just shut up. They are doing, you know, if you're trading this center day, that's fine. But I mean, other than they've got long and short positions, and maybe his boyfriend or his girlfriend or his wife or somebody uh, was playing the market with inside knowledge of what he's saying, um, these guys are really starting to look rather incompetent. And uh, from the guys that, you know, the gang that couldn't shoot straight, uh, getting kind of uh, obnoxious about it. Now, the market did exactly what it should do, and we talked about this yesterday. That is that it went right down to where probably 95% of all technical analysis people would say that you wanted to buy, which is 2045 on the S&P cash. I think it got down to 2042. Uh, but it bounced, closed higher, didn't close lower. Uh, of course, uh, they kind of crushed it this morning uh, after the OPEC people had a uh, little bit of a food fight. Food fight! With the Iranians. You know, there's nothing more than, a, than the Iranians for a lovable bunch of people that you just want to have a group hug with. Uh, but, of course, uh, they yelled and left, shaking their fist. Uh, at the rest saying, there's no way you're going to tell us what we can and cannot sell. We've got nuclear bombs to build. And uh, we're not listening to the Americans. Uh, we've already skunked those morons. Uh, and uh, to tell you the truth, uh, Mr. Saudi, um, we're going to be invading you soon enough as soon as we make enough cash out of selling what we've got now to come invade you and take your oil too. So up yours and we're leaving. And... Uh, the, the interesting was the uh, gentleman from uh, uh, England who always covers these for uh, the press 
over there, and he was he, he was basically just scratching his head and said, uh, you know, he hadn't seen this in like 20 years uh, where the cartel was so um, broken apart. And, of course, we saw the markets actually take that to heart and instantly slam crude down a bit. Now, of course, from yesterday to today, we've got a little bit of change. Uh, that is the whole dollar index, which may be the reason that uh, Draghi had to uh, actually uh, fold um, his hand and run away like a little girl from what he said yesterday. But, you know, we were up 75 cents on the dollar index. Uh, gold is up a bit. I think it was up 2% last time I looked. Um, probably should have had a 5 to 10% move in a lot of those. I think silver was up 3. Uh, but guess what happens when you can't buy crude on the weekend for your hedge in case everything goes to hell in a handbasket? Well, you can't buy crude now because this might even be down to 36 bucks by Monday. Um, what are we going to buy? Well, we got to go out and buy some gold. So it's going to be very important come up Monday whether or not everybody starts dumping the gold that they bought today as a hedge, uh, as the fear hedge going into the weekend. And, of course, it's been a little bit of gold, a little bit, a lot more oil over the last probably eight weeks. Uh, but uh, everybody's searching for somewhere uh, to hang their hat, uh, why they've got 48 hours of no ability to go in and uh, either go long or short the uh, S&Ps. To hedge everything they're doing uh, so they've been using uh, crude and now guess what they've got to be using gold and uh, you're getting just a bit of a bid in there on it now what happens if crude starts to bounce guess what it will be the fear trade uh, uh, commodity du jour and we will continue moving back up uh, <laughs> uh, oh boy Anyway, we've got uh, a lot of uh, stuff happening out here today. Uh, just want to get uh, started. And, of course, uh, you know, every day we come to you between 2 and 3, and I enjoy every person that uh, listens, and it's the reason why we're here. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Every day. Every day. That the thinking... Uh, is being added by our engineer who thinks it should be included in every show. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. In his epic book, uh, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, uh, Jesse Livermore says, there's nothing new under the sun. What has happened before will happen again. Speculation is as old as the hills. And of course, there won't be anything new. Well, that's why I like history so much, especially market history, uh, because you see all these things repeating over and over again. In 1991, Charles Keating, the kingpin of the savings and loan crisis, is convicted on 17 charges of California state security fraud. The former chairman of Lincoln's savings and loan is found guilty of making false statements and omitting disclosures about the risk of junk bonds that were sold to more than 17,000 investors. And I think they got 20 cents on the dollar, if I remember right, uh, when that thing finally was uh, put to bed. So not a whole lot. Uh, but uh, we continue to see junk bonds. And, uh, you know, we're, we've got a rather short list now of uh, cities and towns and probably soon to be states uh, that will join these junk bonds. It certainly looks like Chicago is on the brink. We already know that um, we've got uh, Puerto Rico uh, on that. And the idea that uh, these are the places uh, where the leaders of our country come from and cannot recognize that uh, eh, socialism doesn't work uh, are pushing and pushing. They can't wait for the day that we emulate Detroit and or Greece. But uh, I think eventually we're going to wake up. Uh, it seems like we always have to uh, revisit a bunch of very stupid ideas uh, before we find out what truly works and go back to what does work. But uh, I don't know. I've diverged from my uh, discussions long enough. Uh, anyway, we did talk about the... Uh, OPEC food fight, so I'm kind of done with that. Let's go on to charts here fairly quickly. 
take a quick look at GLD. Now, yesterday, in fact, we'll probably look at some other stuff too. Yesterday, we were talking about uh, why I thought that the markets uh, pretty much had bottomed out. And that is that we saw the exact same thing that we saw around September, which is a lot of index volume and not much volume uh, in the actual stocks that are underneath it. So I have a feeling that uh, that is something that we're going to look at more and more. And that is the index is trying to push around the actual stocks, but the actual stocks not seeing a lot of buying and selling. And that tells us uh, that there's just a little bit of market gas. Probably could use some Pepto-Bismol, maybe a little Maalox, uh, maybe some Tums. Uh, but uh, it doesn't last that long. Now, on the gold market, we've got a nice pop out here. Uh, but uh, we've got a, a high volume low in the GLD on that uh, December 2nd low of 10 million shares. Yesterday, we kind of came up a little on 6.5 million shares. Today, 6.2 million shares. Um, if you're looking to where this thing's going to bounce, I have a feeling this is doing nothing more than getting right up to this gap down that we had on the 6th of November. That day, it gapped down on 8.8 .8 million shares. We want to kind of see that in the gold market, I guess, is we're probably going to have a little bit more drip, drip, drip up as uh, probably a lot of people on the wrong side of gold as uh, they were on the long, uh, wrong side of the dollar yesterday for at least a day. Um, but like I said, if you want the weather to change, just wait for five minutes. We've talked about how I am not have a lot of positions, either long or short, in the newsletters because uh, basically... Um, if there are uh, trades that are less than six hours long, um, it's very tough to duplicate what uh, we do here as a day trader when we talk about trading literally in the uh, scope of 15, 30, or an hour uh, for up and down movements. Uh, but uh, we had a very good uh, look at that uh, 2045 yesterday, and uh, the volume in all of the equities underlying these things uh, just didn't move a lot. Now, uh, what I was really noticing toward the close was Apple's movement out here, and uh, it did uh, nothing more than a little doji out here and instantly reversed. We had 41 million, 41 and a half million shares yesterday. We've got uh, 39 million shares. Uh, and a much bigger candle. This thing, all it did was come back to its gap up from the 18th of November. Um, and that had 46 million shares that day. So, you know, for me, I, I know that you can make money in the short term. And I tried that for several years. Uh, was successful. It became extremely tiring to me. And uh, I am much better off and know that I can make much more money by trading a little less and learning to spend all the extra money. Anyway, uh, we'll talk more about this, but uh, same thing. It's just uh, there wasn't a lot of volume in Apple yesterday. Wasn't a volume in other stuff either. We'll talk more about this as we come back. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger T. TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. One of the sort of losers today, or at least early, was North Folk Southern. Uh, they were in the midst of a buyout, and that looked like that uh, kind of blew up in smoke. Took it down to 96.59 earlier this morning, and of course, uh, kind of a giant reversal of fortune. Uh, it did exactly what it should do based on the charts, and that is it came back, filled all its gap, and turned right around and ran the other way. It gapped up on the uh, 11th, or no, on the 18th of November. With uh, 8.5 million shares, it's gone below that. Uh, with uh, 4.7 million shares, and it's back in that range. So there's at least one train out there, uh, company, that uh, looks like it's not doing too bad. Of course, now they're just off 1%. I think at the worst, they were off about 8 or 9. Um, big reversal of fortunes. And, of course, uh, my guess is we're going to have a lot of volume going into the close. The reason why... Probably people that believe that this market is going down uh, and uh, piled in either short yesterday and they covered, and then they probably shorted again at 2080, and they'll be covering at the end of the day too. You've got a nice setup here. Uh, if you thought that you were going to short this market, uh, these kind of setups, I would never, ever go back and touch this with a 12-foot pole in less than three days because my guess is we had a bunch of people jump on yesterday with margin and uh, some of them still don't believe it probably a couple of them and in individual stocks they may even have uh, may even be break even right now but uh, as the weekend looms they've got to be thinking you know i could come back and reshort this monday i'll just cover now that's all it takes is a little bit of move up now i'm not saying that we either break out the top or break out the bottom my belief is that we are in a trading range probably into the Fed announcement on the 17th. And uh, what will happen is the volume will considerably continue 
uh, to go down each day, making it harder and harder for uh, those people that want to be bears, claws. I, did I say that? Somebody asked the other day. I can't remember if I answered the question. Why is a market uh, thought to be bullish and bearish? The idea is a bull puts its horns down and lifts up and a bear has big claws and claws down on you. Ugh, ugh, ah, mad dog. Anyway, uh, that's why things are known as bulls and bears. I don't know who started it. I'm thinking there's got to be something much better than that. But uh, anyway, North Oak, uh, Southern, uh, kind of an interesting reversal of fortunes out here today, which tells you just uh, doesn't matter what happens. Someone's going to reach up and buy it anyway. Uh, everybody's just kind of uh, a little bit nutty um, right now and euphoric. And uh, I think we can thank the Fed and the ECB and others that can't stand uh, heat for more than a second. Uh, what they will actually cause is a massive crash by continuing to not be able to handle uh, the downside action for more than one day. Ultra Salon Cosmetics and Fragrances. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the company that I see around in some of the strip malls. They sell a lot of uh, hair products and uh, all kinds of stuff, uh, lipstick and all that. Apparently, this company can do no wrong. Uh, there are some stocks that are breaking out with volume, extremely few of them. But uh, Ultra Salon actually had some very good earnings. This thing's done nothing but go up for a while. And uh, it had exactly what you wanted. It didn't just go up to the highs and come right back into the trading range. It broke the highs. Looks like it's going to hold it. It's doing it on uh, big volume, four times the volume. Probably a little bit much, which makes me think that maybe today is going to be an exhaustion move. But certainly this thing has continued to build and uh, break higher as we go out there. But uh, pretty good chart. Not many of them. Uh, as we've gone through a great deal more, uh, like we said, that either we're bouncing off bottoms or bouncing off tops, and uh, neither the twain shall meet. You can always give me a uh, call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com or post a message in the den, and we'll be like that. Uh, okay. Uh, check out my email. Oh, I already talked about Apple, so I will disregard that email. What else do we have here? Shop notes, uh, checking my email, and uh, getting everything shipped. Okay. Uh, a, a bevy? A bevy? Let's go through the profile on this company real quick, just to remind myself. D uh, de uh, discovers, develops, manufactures, and sells pharmaceutical products worldwide. Company products include Humera. Oh, I know that one because it's advertised all the time. Uh, autoimmune diseases. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's true. Life is all about choices. At EverBank, they're making it easy for you to make a smart one with this special cash offer. Open a new yield pledge money market account with funds from another financial institution or deposit new funds into an existing yield pledge money market account and you could earn up to a $500 cash reward. And if you're opening a new account, you'll also get their new higher six-month bonus interest rate along with their yield pledge promise that ensures your yield will always be in the top 5% of competitive accounts at banks nationwide. Open a new account or add to one. It's your choice. To qualify, you must meet balance and other limited time offer requirements. Go to everbank.com forward slash TFNN for details and deposit options or speak with one of the banking specialists at 1-855-750-4051 for more information. You must act by December 31st, 2015 to be eligible. Everbank is a member FDIC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we go to a BV, I guess that's what it is, a BV. Um, of course, this gap up on the 30th of October did so on strong volume. 27.5 million shares yesterday. We got into it with 10 million shares. And again, uh, we had, uh, what, the email about IBB yesterday. And, and uh, you know, I guess the gentleman decided to go ahead and take the rest of his cash, which looks like a pretty good idea now. But uh, that's the real problem here is that uh, the indexes tend to be showing a little bit more volume than the actual stocks underlying them if we go look at the IBB itself and the movement in it. Um, not massive uh, reversal, but enough. Um, but, uh, you know, is it going to get down to that 305? I think the answer is yes. Uh, it's just going to take a while and back down to the 292 area. I think the answer is a yes, too. But I continue to think that we're going to see these markets hold up through Christmas. Uh, what do we have out here? I wanted to see how this one did, Anadarko Petroleum. We've been talking about how a lot of these, uh, especially uh, even since, since uh, late August and into September, uh, these uh, energy companies have been hitting lows with lighter volume and continuing down. Um, Anadarko is really kind of uh, broken down here, but not a lot of volume. But like I said, we see these stocks continue down four, five, ten days uh, after they've broken the lows with lighter volume. And uh, I, this really kind of smacks of 
a uh, great washout, the kind that I'm looking for in gold, uh, I suspect we'll get uh, just like these. And that is just uh, these low volume descents into lower prices. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to be, you know, Anadarko is going to be up on my screen now, uh, probably for the rest of the year. I'm going to look at this one and a few others out here that basically tell us what we're looking at. You had the high volume low on August 24th with 11 million shares. Basically got to the the low yesterday with 6 million shares. Then, of course, broke it uh, with a whole lot more on the back of the OPEC meeting. Um, but again, we're, this is the way washouts come. Sometimes there is no volume. They just continue moving back. The first time you can buy this as a safe trade, you want it to close back above $58.10, but that's going to be given a lot of cash away. Um, probably the best way to play these, and especially the end of the year, um, you know, on uh, any kind of good news in oil, uh, would be buying some kind of puts out here. And I think you just buy small and buy out of the money. And uh, if these things turn, uh, then you're going to get the big reward. I think uh, either playing the equity or trying to go in the money uh, calls on these now is a sucker's bet until we see some kind of signal. Uh, what else do we have out here? Broadcom. Broadcom was uh, getting a little bit of love uh, from the other sectors or other stocks last night or the last couple of days that actually bounced up. Uh, this one didn't do much to the reversal yesterday. I mean, the uh, pop up. Uh, but you're still way short of the May 27th high that had 61 million shares. Yesterday, we had 16.2. Today, 6 million shares. And this is what I'm talking about. A lot of these stocks just getting to the highs, no sign of strength like we saw on that May 27th, which was a, a monster sign of strength. And as we said before, um, you know, it's kind of the, the Goldilocks and the three bears. You just want to see... Um, you know, you don't want to see too much volume. You don't want to see too little volume. There's something that's called just right. And uh, normally that's like 200% of the volume, 250. You get something like 61 million shares. And generally that is an exhaustion move. This one came all the way back and now it's back all the way. And now, of course, you've got uh, it up to those highs with not much. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we've got Joe. Joe didn't tell us where he's uh, emailing from, uh, but he says, Dave, you mentioned that when you believe the stock market would fall apart, did you say most likely after the first of the year? Yeah, I, I've said that a bunch of times. So hopefully I will say it one more time. Yes. Uh, yes. And yes, will it be soon after the first of the year? Yes. Uh, I will be looking very hard after Christmas. Uh, another question. Um, you're one scary bear. You almost broke out of the bear spray. Hmm. What do you think of the follow-through day on NVIDIA? NVDA. Uh, I'm looking at the going along the stock at the end of the year right here. Uh, boy. I, you know, I couldn't do it. Um, I don't like the volume up here on NVIDIA. Uh, more likely it's going to pull back. Um, my plays between now and the end of the year, I do think we're going up slightly higher, are going to be stocks with high short interest. And uh, I haven't looked at short interest on this for a while. Uh, let's take a quick look at it. Um, in... VDA. Okay, here we go. Okay. Why didn't I have it? No, that's not it. I guess if I could type correctly, it wouldn't matter. There we go. Okay. Um, so NASDAQ shows the last reporting date, the 13th, and that's what I say some of the problem out here. This, of course, uh, 13 point, uh, no, excuse me, 3.5 days to cover. So you don't have a lot of short interest in this stock 
Uh, don't know what it did in the last couple of days. Um, how much time we got here? Eight minutes. Uh, I can tell you exactly how many shares were shorted in the last couple of days. I don't know if that will be easy to do. I'll do it during the break. When we come back, uh, hopefully I'll remember it. Um, I'll tell you exactly how many shares were short NVIDIA yesterday and that maybe a couple of days before, and we'll get a idea of what percentage of this higher volume is out here. Uh, do I expect a big pullback in NVIDIA? No. I just think that there is better low-hanging fruit, and those are people that are highly short, three days to cover. Probably not enough for me to think that just a market that goes sideways would see NVIDIA really press farther higher and higher. Uh, I dislike that you really don't have a sign of strength out here today as it did go higher. I probably would have liked to seen somewhere between 10 and 12 million shares. My guess is we get about 8.5 million shares as we go through the end of the day. But uh, that's it. I am one scary bear. Almost broke out of the bear spray. Hmm. I don't know how that happens or what that means actually. Uh, anyway, remind myself NVIDIA and we'll, we'll show you one of the apps that I'm working on uh, with uh, my new invention for uh, implying short uh, volume out of uh, the marketplace on a daily basis. Uh, gold, uh, very kind of interesting move out here. Wanted to see how this thing, there's double gaps out here in Grand Gold Resources. Uh, that gap actually happened back on the 5th of November at Gap down with 1.144 million shares. Uh, today, Rangold Resources up with 620,000 shares today. So again, like I said, a lot of these uh, things look like some counter moves out here. If you just wanted to look at the uh, retracement on Rangold to your 50% move, um, you know, you, what was it? 50% uh, move was 65.42. Uh, 618 is uh, 66 bucks. So you're pretty close to everything that you'd want to get out of this one. Uh, the volume so far on my power law vector in here suggests that this could be an ABC down. So you've got to be watching these things very closely. Um, you do have a big confluence area that starts at about uh, just a hair under 67 bucks and it goes up to 69 bucks. And uh, what you want to see or what you would expect in that is very, if this thing is going back up to test its October $72 high, you um, would expect very tough sledding. Uh, that is normally when they're that wide, they become a congestion zone of people getting in and out. And normally there are enough people getting out at that point. They've got most of their money back if they got in at the wrong time that it becomes tough sledding. You got the easy money out of uh, Rangold here today, and it's the volume that will uh, be what you're looking at in gold. But one of the reasons why I'm not uh, all that excited about gold yet, I have yet to see that sign of strength and or a washout like we're getting in crude. Um, to me, crude looks like it would set up a lot sooner uh, if we can get some good closes under 40 bucks, maybe down to 36 bucks, we may find some uh, good deals in our uh, in our stockings for Christmas out here. Uh, let's see what else we've got going on out here. I uh, wanted to see how all scripts uh, handled its kind of blow off of the last few days. Another one that uh, tested highs on half volume. July 17th, we saw $15.41 with 11 million shares. As we got into that last couple of days, 5.7 million shares Yesterday, or the day before yesterday, yeah, uh, the second, uh, this thing went up, pierced it, closed back in the trading range with just 3 million shares against that 11 million shares yesterday. Volume, eh, this is, again, why I can't really be long or short any of these things. 2 million shares on the way down. Uh, very tepid bounce on the way back up. This means that a lot of these stocks continue to be in a very wide trading range. Uh, and I don't see any difference to change my mind in that one. Of uh, stocks that have had some fairly decent earnings as of late, but are now going up on light volume, Netgear is one of these. Um, this, of course, had uh, good earnings on the 23rd of October. 
really a huge surprise. And you got exactly what you were looking for, which is that big sign of strength, uh, lots of volume. Um, you would have liked to seen this thing probably pull back to about 35 bucks to buy it. It's just continued to kind of go up since then. But what we do see is very, very light volume from the November 24th move back up here high. And uh, these can be very brittle stocks if bad news comes out on them. SETY, uh, Solar City. Again, we talked about this one and uh, how I kind of missed it. Uh, but I would have liked to have been long this with some calls, not because it's a great stock or because it's going higher or not even it's not even going bankrupt next year. The reason I like this one was just a massive amount of shorts in it. And all you need to see is a bit of the move come back up. You probably got everything that there is in Solar City to be had. Uh, it's come back and filled this gap. Uh, not that it's going down um, anytime soon. I can imagine this thing could just go sideways into the end of the year. But that may be all the time it needs to consolidate and then get ready for its next ABC move down. This thing gap down on huge volume on the 30th of October with 26 plus million shares. We're in back into that gap down by 7 million shares, 8 million shares. Today, 2 million shares, just not a lot of volume. It won't be anything out of the ordinary just to see the markets continue kind of going sideways uh, back in this level as the shorts slowly peel off going into the end of the year. If this is, as I think it is, a ABC on the way down, uh, you've got a pretty spectacular one. We've talked about why these solar companies have been such horrible uh, investments, in my opinion, and that was that they lived by the green check, i.e. subsidies from the government. They will die by the green check in that most of those subsidies have gone away. The federal ones we talked about all are going away in 2016. Uh, there are some local areas where they have been doing better. We've also talked about how probably one of the top two or three short uh, people, uh, short uh, traders uh, in the market uh, that isn't a bloviator, that just doesn't go around with a microphone uh, blabbing to blab. He basically comes out and says, here's my thesis on this. This is why I'm short. I'll be short probably the next two years. And that's that. And, uh, of course, this is the same guy that uh, shorted Enron. And uh, he kind of pulls some weight in this. Uh, but basically, he just says they're a financing company. And when rates go up, uh, we will find out who is not wearing a bathing suit when the tide goes out. Uh, but uh, this has a nice setup. I think this has every ability to go back to the one bot to one uh, uh, projection, which takes it to $12.64. I would not be surprised. Uh, all of these uh, companies tend to be a house of cards. They have been since day one, and it's not political. Um, we did this in the uh, uh, 20, oh, what is it, 2005 to 2008 uh, uh, with uh, the Bush administration and fuel cells. So uh, everybody just picks their loser of alternative energy. Uh, this cycle, it will be the solar stocks, I suspect. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS as proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back, and uh, I did something here. Oh, I got everything going on. I wanted to check just a couple of things. Um, see how things are going out here. Uh, 2091, as I said, I thought that probably we had a lot of people on the wrong side of the market uh, from yesterday. They probably all piled in at the close yesterday and are all piling out uh, at the close today going into a weekend. Don't want to be sitting at, We're up 42 points on the S&P cash. Volume is slightly better than yesterday. Not a whole lot. 2.9 billion shares, but it is better. Again, I could see a lot of people uh, really cleaning the clocks of shorts going in to the close today. I am not expecting a big move next week. I think we could see a lot of sideways action. Uh, but again, um, you know, there just isn't a lot of downside in this market. There isn't a lot of upside. Uh, eventually, this market will break. I am loath to anticipate it. The reason why... Uh, we are going into the end of the year, and I've spent many a year trying to make money as volume continues to drop going into Christmas vacation. It is always problematic. At the best, even when the markets pull back, they don't pull back near as far as I thought that they would. Uh, I think we could see that. We may, I may be a little low on the upside target uh, for my trading range here. I, I was thinking maybe 2010. Uh, on the high side, maybe we could get to 2020 or, or 2120 or 2130 or something, maybe a little higher 
than I thought. Options are not showing that. We'll take a look at those after the bell. Um, and uh, we'll get to some other things. Uh, 2.88 uh, billion shares so far on the New York Consolidated Tape. And, of course, the VIX uh, off almost 16% today. Again, um, very tough to be short against the Fed or the ECB or anybody. They're uh, just going to do something wrong and then try to fix it yet the next day. But uh, as I said, I, in fact, I probably didn't talk long enough about it. But I do think that we are setting up uh, a high in this market that uh, they will not be able to fix by jawboning uh, for more than a day or two. I think we can see that continue on. Uh, anyway, I uh, wanted to go back and look at the semiconductors. Uh, again, like I said, not a lot of volume at the top, not a lot of volume at the bottom. Semiconductors Holders Trust, we talked about this last few days, going up against that October 23rd high, $56.36. And we've got uh, 3.2 million shares yesterday on the downside. We flip right around to the upside, but only 1.2 million shares today. And again, uh, the indexes uh, show a lot of volume that we do not find as we drill down farther into the ETFs. And I just it looks to me like a lot of high-frequency traders are back moving these markets around. If we go back and look at the SOX L, um, this kind of tells the same thing. It confirms what we knew uh, of the semis. October 23rd high, 29.98, uh, 850,000 shares. And uh, yesterday came down on 463,000 shares. Today up on 318 so far. So maybe it can get back up to the volume that it had yesterday. But not a whole lot there. Now, we haven't had an in-studio Tech Insider Hour in a while. I've done some from home. Uh, we've done some when Tom's been gone. He's uh, Sometimes I've not been able to do it for the last three weeks. I got a ton of stuff uh, that we are setting up for. And I will be in studio with Tom O'Brien in the second hour, so don't miss it. We got a lot of things to talk about. It's the broad brush discussion of technology as it uh, converges with the stock market. So we'll see you then. Same bat channel, same bat time. Remember to sell when you can, not when you have to. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.